Next month, when Ridley Scott's new film Exodus opens, bugs will once again be maligned as harbingers of doom. When you think about religion and insects, your immediate go-to is going to be the plagues of locusts and the plagues of flies associated with the Old Testament. Dr. Michael Wall is curator of entomology at the Nat. Watch it, he is fast. <laughs> I love that. He gets a bit defensive about the little critters he studies when people try to give them a bad rap. As an entomologist, it's hard for me to say they deserve <laughs> a, bad, <laughs> a bad reputation. Um, but certainly, you can understand, based on their natural history, why these insects might be associated with harbingers of doom. Because either they're feeding on blood, they're feeding on carrion, so therefore they're associated with death or they're feeding on your crops, which of course is taking away your livelihood. But then we have other groups that are represented a little bit more positively. Beetles are generally represented quite positively within religion. Which leads us back to ancient Egypt. We're here at the San Diego Natural History Museum in our uh, new exhibit on King Tut, uh, about the discovery of King Tut, and we're standing next to one of the big wow pieces within the exhibit. And right next to me, you can see here, uh, a representation of an insect within this exhibit and we see here what is often referred to as the sacred scarab beetle. And you'd be hard pressed to walk through this exhibit without uh, encountering a scarab beetle along the way. They're everywhere within the hieroglyphics repeated over and over again. This is a winged scarab but clearly those wings are much more representative of a bird's wings and so sometimes they would like kind of do animal mashups. One of the reasons the scarab is so prevalent in King Tut's tomb is that it's part of his name. So the cartouche is, it's supposed to be emblematic of a circle of rope. So you can actually even see how it could be a, a knot tied down here. And this, the circle of rope is to protect the name of the person who's inside of it. And we've got three different hieroglyphics here. One here represents all and then the scarab represents form or manifestation, and these three little dots make it plural, so all manifestations or forms of the sun god Ra. Wall pulls out examples of some real scarabs from the Nat's extensive collection. There is a particular scarab that is thought to be the representation that the Egyptians base their sacred scarabs off of, and they were dark like this. But once again, you'll find Hollywood movies trying to give bugs a bad name by depicting the scarab in various mummy films as lethal or cursed. Contrary to what the popular movies might depict, what we actually see when we look back into the mythology and the religion of Egypt is that the scarab was associated with the transport of the sun across the sky. Uh, and you might wonder, why scarabs? Why are scarabs in charge of rolling the sun across the sky? And it's because they're not just scarab beetles, but more specifically, they're dung beetles that, according to you know, our natural history research, we know, take these balls of dung and they roll them up and they lay eggs in them. And so the rolling symbolizes the rolling of the sun, but then also out of these balls of dung, out of this earth, this grossness of dung, emerges these new scarabs. And this is the metamorphosis or the rebirth from dust. Uh, but then on top of that, uh, there is a scorpion goddess associated with uh, Egypt, Egyptian religion. And that's probably the origin of actually the movie, the scorpion king is, is associated with actually particular kings that uh, very much felt like this goddess was kind of in their wheelhouse, you know, protecting them. And there's images of this scorpion goddess inside of our exhibit, and she's one of four goddesses that helps protect the canopic jars of King Tut. The, the literal translation of her name is uh, she who can open the throat, but it can also be interpreted as, as she who can close the throat because the stinging from a scorpion causes uh, your, your body to have a reaction that closes up the throat, and that's often the way that uh, people would die. Wall says you often see this more positive imagery of bugs in religions that use animals as representations of their gods. And there is a field, not a very large field, but a field of what we call cultural entomology of this very thing. How do insects play into popular culture, ancient cultures, etc.? And And they all, for the most part, tie back to the natural history. And what it tells me is that these cultures were very observant of what was going on in their natural environment. And they incorporated these insects into their stories and their cultures and their fireside tales and their religion. Um, and it was based off of their actual observations. 
There's some examples that aren't necessarily spot on, but they're pretty close. And that's how a simple dung beetle became a sacred scarab. Beth Accomando, KPBS News.